and welcome back everybody so last video we got it all put together except for the muffler well I've got a muffler on it now but I'm gonna show you here in a second the details of that muffler and everything and whatnot and also this video I'll be showing you clips that have uh, me starting and running it and everything doing test runs trying to get the rings broken and stuff and I gotta say it runs fantastic I cannot believe how well it runs. This saw is really strong um, runner and everything. I can't say I really need a decomp for it. Um, it's it, it it's definitely something you have to be practiced at starting and everything. Um, as rings break in and everything, the compression gets a little bit better. But um, I'm gonna quit yammering here and we're gonna go ahead and jump to the uh, installation of the muffler. I would've had it on the end of the last video, but I saw that we were almost at an hour. So I cut that and continue it right now. And then we're gonna jump into all those clips and everything of it running. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the next thing. And we're gonna put a clutch on this thing and a bar and chain that I have chosen and I'll explain why I chose these. So let's go ahead, let's jump into those. So here we are. So, you send, a, you send a business card, I'll show you on here, I, if I can figure stuff out. So, there's that. And, cool little decal. So, awesome. So, here's the exhaust. It's going to look fantastic on here. See? Exactly what it needs. Um... The only thing I gotta say is some of the casting is to be desired. Like through here, this is, it's, it isn't the greatest. So for, for performance reasons, yeah, this is a straight through exhaust. You, it has nothing there, just blows straight through. But if you're into port matching for performance, um, you're definitely gonna wanna take some time with the die grinder on this or, you know, your carbide bits and stuff like that. But that is not my goal for this. All right, so. Now, there is a third bolt hole here that you could put a nut in and whatnot for it. You drill through here, but a lot of videos I'm seeing with these on here, guys have not need to do that as long as I get this tightened down real good. They don't need it, but I'm kind of thinking we'll, we'll run with it and see how it works without it, but if I need to, I will drill through that and then put this on there. This is a hefty chunk of aluminum be hanging off of here, so... But put a nut in there. I think I've had to do this before. And I've had to grind one down to put inside there. And then, you know, you just drill your hole right there. Because everything lines up just perfect. Because this is made for McCullough. So, we'll see how time behaves. Now, that gasket I was telling you about a while back. Maybe during the video. This is a 101B gasket. Alright. Get you zoomed in here because we're going to need to. So, this is your exhaust gasket. And see how much of your port you can actually, how much you can really open this up. This is how tiny this is compared to your actual port. So I may try to take a grinder to this in the future. We'll see. It may add just a little bit of back pressure. But that is how much you've got top and bottom that you can really open this up. If I recall correctly, it might not be that much. I got to get the tape off of here that has now successfully got itself to stay stuck on there forever. And, of course, that thumb is still completely useless. So let me get this tape off, and then we'll check things out. Yeah, you see this? This gasket sits right in here. It's recessed in so that it can't pop out, fly out, blow out, nothing. That is how much you can grind off of this around here. There's a lot to be desired. Um, this isn't a performance, this is a performance chainsaw, but it isn't racing. I'm not out on the track racing or anything, so I may just live with it as is. It may provide just a little bit of back pressure that it may need, but I will have to put a washer or spacer in between if I decide to put that third bolt on. Just gap it out. So there's a tiny thin little gap at that. It's gonna look fantastic. So what I do remember, I think they were five eighths bolts and we're gonna Allen them. Any torque spec, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, tight, but other than putting this on, I'll have to do the fuel line setup, which I've done that before. I may just toss it in this video, I don't know. So 
Let's get that stuff a going. I don't have any lock. I think I might have some lock washers somewhere. I'll see what I can dig up. No washers needed. I look more at the casting here. It's got just the divots put in for Allen heads or and that's what you got to use because that's all that's going to fit. Nothing more. Um, I went with three quarter because this is a lot thicker here than your typical exhaust. Back in there. Let's get our Allen out. Gasket's already sitting cool and cozy in there. Mind you, not a really cheap muffler, but... I mean, if you're going to do a card engine, you're going to do something this far, you might as well. I can't see the other one. Ugh. Yeah, ominous. What was that look? What just like made a weird, weird, oh, you know what? I bet it was something on the inside of this cover. Took a spill. I still got to take off the uh, starter cover to hook up the... Uh, kill switch. Thumb's getting a little better. It's feeling better. What was that weird sound? Like, that's... Oh, it's that nut that I had lost yesterday. Uh, there we go. That dropped down somewhere from the gas tank in and... Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I found that one. That's one for the starter, upper starter cover. Well, that would have sucked just started and got stuck in something. Well, good thing I got to take that cover back off anyways. I mean, I guess I could have gone with just, you know, this little shorty right here. Just there you go. Here's your exhaust. And yeah, it'll directionalize, but this thing would be loud. Yeah, see all the size of this monster here, this port. Versus the GEM. And then there was also... I could just blow it back up in my face option or blow it back down at the ground option. You know, something weird. Something that just has stupid written on it. But we're not going to go full stupid today. Wait for this thumb to heal before I pull this over. I also got to put this uh, cover over the side here too. Before I put the clutch on and everything. But I still got to get a reverse nut. I don't know how long this video is, but this is so much easier without a clutch cover. So get that tightened on there, and then I guess we'll uh, look into the fuel tank situation. So GEM, awesome, awesome stuff. Glad to have some official stuff on this saw. So, all right, let me get this finished. All right, very simple procedure here. So on Amazon, I get these little barbs or whatever they're called um i don't even know what i did with the bag for it probably back in the thing but i get these barbs that are double end barbs with a thread nut on it comes with a bunch of washers the washers you can use for whatever you know so make sure you get the end i don't know the specific yeah so. so i get this fits through this hole absolutely perfectly but use a little bit of seal all uh -huh. Once my thumb heals, I don't have to use my teeth or other objects. So, smooge it around. Stuff is fantastic. You can find this at like Dollar Tree, AutoZone, probably O'Reilly's, places like that. So, put a good bead around it. Let her set up for a minute. Or, you know, however you feel. I've already measured out some fuel line real quick. It does not take much to do this. Putting fuel line on the inside of it kind of sucks. It'll get to it, but you know, you got a barb set up. It'll fit right over this fuel line. It'll fit just over a ducky and everything once it's in because you're bolting this in place is what you're doing. So if you're real good with your fingers, <laughs> jokes aside. that in you're looking through the gas tank make sure you have light that you can see into the gas tank with I need to more distance 
little more distance on this. Use all the barbs. You don't have to cut it down, but you can cut down the barbs if you so please. It's kind of your choice. Tilt the saw. You can kind of hopefully drop it. There you go. Hold on, it's balancing. You can use, like I say, good with your fingers. So now it's stuck in there. It'll just kind of hang out there now. It isn't going to drop down. Probably more surgical ways of doing it, applying seal all. This stuff just kind of likes to do its own thing some days. Rotate. Put a little bit more on. I try to be careful with this stuff, but it's it's your typical, you know, like rubber cement pretty much. A little bit goes a long ways. All right. Put your nut on. And that kind of just holds in place there, it seems like. Get some actual pliers on that. And that has a pretty good hold onto the tank there, so it's not going anywhere. We we'll just kind of torque her down without smushing the brass fitting too much, you genius. There we go. Smush down. Went a little aggressive there, but that's not coming undone. And then you can apply your fuel line, which has no kink in it here. It's all the way down on that there, short fuel line. And as for this right here, I can shorten that down a ton. And it is a bit of a loose fit on this one. Depends on what size the, that is. So I may have to put a zip tie on that, a little tiny one. But I don't want all that sticking up. Obviously, I have to put the air filter on it. And then I have to, I still have the seal around here. That part down there. But I'll probably do that a little bit later. Just cut off a little bit at a time here. I might just seal all this around that too. This is just an impulse line right here. See? Look at that. Just don't get any of those down your impulse line. I made that mistake once when I was doing a sealing up on a Model 77 I did a while back. And I did a custom fuel uh, custom fuel uh, pump on the inside. And I put some fittings and stuff inside the tank and whatnot. And it held, but I accidentally sealed over the impulse. So no matter what I was doing, I even changed out to a different pump. Wouldn't work. I'm like, what's going on here? So I tried to... I put my mouth over the uh, impulse and no air. And I'm like, what? I'm like, no way, dummy. You did. You really forgot? You really messed up that bad? And sure enough, I did. Little mini zip tie. So I put a hole in it real quick and you guessed it, worked fantastically after that. I just have a bunch of mini zip ties around here. Like those little tiny devil ones. Uh, no, there, there they are. They're at the bottom. They don't get used too often. Yeah, see, that's why we got to do this. This is why we can't have nice stuff. Make sure, you're all the way down. I'm no expert at zip ties, but I think that's going to hold just fine by the time the sealer cures and everything. Flush cut as flush as I can get, and there you go. You have your fuel system 
almost hooked up. I have to figure out this fuel line. It's, it's ripped at the end here, so there's no saving it. So what I do, this might fit into the inside of one of these. If not, then I cut that and I put it on the inside of the fuel line, like generously put it inside of this, uh, this Tigon. I'm sure I've got plenty more of it, a whole roll of it up there. So measure out what it wants from the tank and everything, which this looks like God's plenty. And it's, and this is weighted at the end. You can see where it sat there and rubbed on the bottom of the tank for a while as it idled and ran because it sat, uh, yeah, like that. So it just sat there at the bottom and just idled and ran. I don't know, that's a different spot to rub. Maybe there's a couple spots they did, but I've seen them where it's been rubbed completely from just idling and running and stuff. So, all right, I'll get that and then show you guys. strong one right there not running away or anything it's got a perfect go enjoyed all that running and everything whatnot this muffler was an absolute perfect choice for this saw um it's definitely it's definitely worth it and everything it has not vibrated off nothing it is working fantastic this saw is extremely loud i mean it is loud this muffler is just exhaust straight over down out and that's it it's it doesn't quiet like they say, but it was never meant to be quiet to begin with. Yeah, I remember these engines also sat like upward or at an angle, so the noise was always going to come out. It's it's a go kart engine, you know. What do you expect? Um, another little thing that I'd had an issue on was uh, it would not oil for its life. Um, so what I ended up having to do, I knew there was a check ball valve inside of these, and I had to get inside there. And I had another one here as an example. There is a screw right, if my brain works, get this oriented right, underneath this little screw right here, you take that out, this one I had to put a bunch of heat to it in the impact, and there is a check ball valve that is inside of this assembly in here. Alright, so what I had to do on this one, I undid the screw, 
and I would prime it. I tried everything, it wouldn't work. So I had to get a sewing needle, a small but rigid one, get in there with the pliers, and I pressed on that ball, and the ball was just a little jammed up from sitting many, many years. And it started oiling, manual oiling, and I just, it was a sigh of relief. I thought I was gonna have to take this thing all back apart and everything. And I fired it up, and the oiler just pours the oil out. So it is all good and ready for a bar and chain combination. Now, the bar and chain combination that I have, that I've chosen, I is it's in it's a vintage no it's vintage Sumera rotary tip is what they called it back in the day. Now I've got a roller nose here, a Canon, uh, an Oregon roller nose I think it is or a Canon or something. But the problem is I don't have the ch I have chain, but the chain that I've got right here this is a vintage bar still. They don't make these tips anymore. This is a 404 58, 058 gauge. And this is also a square ground chain. Um, got it off of eBay. I didn't even realize it was square ground till now when I had just started fitting in everything. I'm like, I know I got it. So I bought these bars and I have a, two more of them from James Reed. Super thank you for selling those to me way back. Um, these were used for logging operations, like one time logging operations up in Canada. And then <sighs> done. they were done with them and everything. So this is a 32 inch. This is a 32 inch bar with a 30 inch cut on it. Uh, I think the chain is going to work out perfect. I wanted to go with a 4048 sprocket. Unfortunately, I do not have one of those. I have a 4047 right here that instead we are going to use that one. So that'll be the better choice. Um, I'm not going for speed or anything with this saw and whatnot. It's like I say, it's going to be a show saw. It'll be in the house more or less and, um, and everything. Uh, paint on top. The clear coat and everything absolutely just hates gasoline. I mean, it's not chemical resistant in any way, shape, or form. So, I've already taken the time off camera to do a bunch of cleaning of parts and everything. The clutch, ultrasonic, it, everything like that. I have the needle bearing, everything. I cleaned up the crankshaft. It is in absolute beautiful shape, nice and smooth, no pitting or anything bad that's going to ruin it. I have new old stock reverse thread nuts for these I or had to order those and I also during this video hopefully we can slap its decal on you can find these on eBay and the guy that does this also includes another little thing which I'm gonna put on the bottom of this one too my other saw has it if it'll quit fighting with me so whenever you flip it over that on the bottom too it may put you in the hospital so we're gonna get on to those here in a little bit those would be the final things that we probably put on it and then stuff and then hopefully we'll be making cut I do have to modify this bar to oil a little bit so I'm gonna jump in now and that try to keep this uh, one simple short and sweet um, also I've got a show coming up here in a few weeks uh, an antique vintage engine show and everything. Um, I don't know how well the cell phone signal is out there this year. Um, last year it was not very good, so I don't know how well to catch you all and everything unless some reason they uh, got better signal out there and stuff. But if not, uh, we're going to have a lot of video to go through and everything and whatnot of the event. Um, it's the Ileana Engine Power Show. It can be found on uh, Facebook and everything. That's where I'll be at. The uh, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, if everything goes permitted. I've already taken the time off work, everything to do that. So if you guys are going to that show or thinking about going to a show or something like that, I should be there and everything and whatnot. Keep an eye on my Instagram and everything. I'll keep you all updated on that. But let's go ahead. Let's get this clutch put on here. Let's get this back piece put on first and everything. And we'll go from there because, you know, yammering and not saw stuff. Mm. Sorry, I had to take a drink there. All right. So, Ultrasonic Cleaner did a fantastic job cleaning up all these parts. I did not have to scrub one of these. And this had probably many, many years of Douglas fir, dirt, and everything, grime, oil on it. I put them in there and stuff and whatnot. So, just a last little recap and look at everything here. The oiler, 
it oils a lot. It is a mess maker from absolute hell, but that's a good thing. So that works fantastically. That little residue right there is from me putting two stroke in and everything trying to mainly pump it, but even then, none of it, not enough is coming out from this to even affect it, so I don't care. Even if it falls down, oils up things, so be it. So, last little look at the uh, engine and everything and whatnot here before we say goodbye. I think these fins are totally useless. There's no air that blows over them whatsoever in any direction. But, that's probably one of the most overlooked parts on these engines and is behind these covers. Nobody opens them up to clean them. A lot of maintenance on these. Of course, about every chainsaw you're ever gonna come across is gonna be a mess. Got any podcast ideas? Something for me to rant about, talk about? I have some ideas. Let me know in the comments. How you guys liking the series so far? Better not rattle, that's gonna be annoying. Don't wanna rattle in. Everything I put down is secure. These came out by hand, they can go back in by hand. That bottom one's unused. In the world of karting, you have a, that's where your holder goes. You have like engine mount plates and stuff like that. Outside surrounds, yeah, you have chip guards and stuff like that. Um, like this one, for instance. Be pretty cool for a racing saw application, wouldn't that? That actually looks pretty cool on there. Just like have that and open clutch this bad boy. Ow! Might be an idea to do on another saw I've got sitting back there. I think I like that, honestly. We're gonna have to figure something out. But that is a very vintage, very vintage cart labs. Maybe I'll see if I can find somebody with the GEM to trade on there, so. All right, that's on. There were no locky things when I got to it and everything. Somebody had rebuilt the other engine and stuff for that, so. All right, let's go ahead. Let's now our bearing. is not first. We'll put a touch on here. Our protecting one, that is to protect your seal. Can't remember if there was one behind it or not. I wouldn't think. No. That just rode right like that. I figured as much when I took it apart. So you got that. You've got a spacer right here. Roll this up. Make your bearing real good. I got ultrasonic cleaned and it came out back to beautiful. And this is wheel bearing grease, so it should easily be able to handle the task at hand here for a while. And it, you know, after the first few startups, it'll just all run out everywhere. Get it cleaned out of here the best you can. Slide this over. Pretty sure one of these was in here, maybe. So you don't want grease and everything on your tapered shaft there. I don't think that's supposed to be it. I'm not sure. You know what I forgot? Because you guys yelled it loud enough. Derp. Let's rock it. No, oh, wait, wait. No, no. Which way was I supposed to go again? I know there's a specific way. I don't want to put it on wrong. I don't want to look like too much of an idiot, so I'll look it up here. Per a set of instructions I have, it says like that. Now, 101Bs, 
Super Pro 125s. They do not have a key, and I'm probably pretty sure a bunch of other models, maybe, do not have keys on the, on the whatchamacallit there, the uh, PTO. There was no need for it. It was completely useless. It did nothing at, in the end there. Now, you're going to find them with the keyhole on there still, but it does nothing. You do not have to put them on the chainsaws that have the keys on this side, so... You know, I'm running a few saws over here, CP125 and my 797. They uh, they both do not have the keys in them. I uh, had the CP125, it came apart on me a little while back. And like when I was running it and stuff like that and the nut loosened and it tried to damage the crankshaft a little bit. So I just took the key out, tightened her down and it just runs awesome. So this is also the four shoe clutch. This was a little more desired than the three shoe from my understanding. From guys and everything back in the day so the taper is what holds everything and then these bolts right here I'm running one of these on another one these are reverse thread as I said earlier so it's kind of weird but yeah it has an arrow telling you the direction to turn it to go off See that arrow right there? Has off, not on. Like a charm. And then you gotta tighten it down with your life, for your life. Ugh, dehydrated. It's almost the end of my vacation. What have I accomplished? It's a 14 millimeter for these two, so. Reverse, like that's really going to do any good. I'm probably going to have to do the old rope down the spark plug trick here to tighten this on. If you've seen the previous videos, you know what I'm talking about on that. But we put, take out the spark plug, you put a rope inside of it, and that'll hold the piston from hitting top dead center. It's, it'll press against the head. You don't use something metal against your piston. Don't be dumb and do that. You can chip it, break it, whatever. Don't put something through your exhaust port. You can damage the piston that way too. Literally, it's smashing a string to be able to use as a piston stop. It's probably one of the best piston stops you could use for these. So let me do that, get that, and then we'll go ahead and tighten things up. Clots 32 to 1. It is very happy. Very happy with how it is. Now, I haven't put it under a load yet and got it real hot or anything, so we'll see how that goes. But for now, everything is happy and adjusted beautifully. So, I'm going to go ahead and find out where... Just don't want it to go through a port or anything like that, so... And don't have a burnt end going in either. There we go. We are hitting the string. And of course, it's going to want to go backwards. So pull that out. There we go. Now, you can try to use your starter or whatever, your starter rope and stuff like that. It can catch on to it, but I prefer not to. Could break your starter. Get her good and snug. Remember, the taper is what holds it. The nut is just applying the pressure. That's still happy. That's turning with that. We pull our rope out. That might just be on there. I don't know. I don't know. But that is turning happy. Still has back and forth play. So that's good news. And we have our back and forth with this, our 404. So, I had some 3.8s in 58, but I could have run the roller nose, but I decided I want to do 404. Like I say, it has square ground on this, so it'd be really staying periodically correct with that kind of chain. I wish I had some more 52 AJ, like what the other 101 has up there, but that is some vintage stuff. And you can get, so there's a, another 
aftermarket replacement. Oregon made a replacement chain for it or something like that. I don't know if it's square ground or if it's what exactly it is, but it's looking good. Looking good. All right, let's go ahead and fit our bar and chain. I've got to get it to where I can oil still. So we'll get to there. I got to modify for that. And I have a video on how to do that too. I'll probably leave that in the uh, description on how to do that. So that'll probably be a quick off camera work for me. So the bar here in question, I've already put the chain on to make sure everything's fine. Where these marks are, those are some tight spots on the bar. It's hard to see on the camera, probably impossible. But right here, there's it thins down just enough to where it's really tight to put a link in. Like right here and right here. Yeah, definitely right there. You guys should be able to see that. So I need to get a screwdriver in there and just barely open those spots up. And then over here, this whole section right here, it's a pretty tight. So I'm just gonna go in there with a the screwdriver, which are not prying devices or beating on devices. Or I could actually go ahead, take my chisel right here, and I can just put it in there and open up. And that screwdriver doesn't better fit. So we'll do that. Put it in there, tap it down, and uh, try to get this to fit just a little bit better. Not why I can do this just sitting like this, but it's so one of our first spots is right in here. Just opening it up a little bit, not too much. See how well the chain fits on that. So it fits down here. I gotta get this chain on here straighter. Stretch it out a little bit. See how it all fits into these areas down there? Fits down there, but right there, it completely hates life. So that's what I'm talking about is that right there. So I've got to open those up a little bit. Yeah, fits good here. See where I'm talking about there, where I've marked it. So it's tight, a little too tight. So we'll open it up. I'll just go through and tap them through. Much better. All the marks in and out, and it's not excessive in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the bar this way. Like I said, I just tapped it all the way down with this one, and it plinked, and then you can pull it and plink right out. So that was the perfect size screwdriver. So I'm going to go the rest of the way here, make sure everything's happy, and we'll go from there. And of course, this chain's going to have some stretching out to do too. Ooh, I just noticed the mess on the lower bar on the exhaust on this. So, we won't be getting cut until tomorrow, though. That's the problem. It's getting dark out, and I hope everybody had a good 4th of July. If it were 4th of July, it'd be totally acceptable to be able to make noise at this time, but nope, it isn't. Huh. I wonder why it seems like it's a little loud inside that. Some of the foam's missing. I might have to add my own insulation into there. Huh. Still better than nothing, right? All seems happy, all seems well. Might be a couple other little tight spots on it, but it's nothing that's gonna hurt this. So getting this on, I have yet to put this on here. Uh, we gotta take the chain back off. And a couple snug spots, but they'll unsnug as time goes on. Probably not. Thought about cleaning up the bar, but I'm not a professional polisher. Whoops. As you know, shiny stuff and everything, it just doesn't work out with me. You see how shiny the saw is and just isn't working out. We'll get you guys up here a little bit. Get some stuff out of the way here real quick. You know, stuff that's going to get knocked down inevitably. This light loves to sag. Well, that's my new set up some Harbor Freight. I gotta make it to where it sits up on that thingamajig up there. Finally bought a new battery for my temperature gauge. That was my problem the whole time. Huh, it appears you guys are in the way. 
No, you guys are not in the way. I'm gonna make sure you aren't the cause of my problem right now. Looking pretty good. Hold on a sec, we may, well no, we'll have to make sure that the adjuster works too for the oiling system. Where are my, I have them in here. There they are. Oh, forgot to clean them. That one got broke at one point. Got my bar shims. Sometimes I don't even run them on the saws, but this one, I'll give them an exception. This is the bar shim. Gotta find some bar nuts. Might have to steal them off something. Go see if the chain works before we do anything, huh? Guess that makes sense. Uh, we'll just put you guys get up and put you all way over here while I work. How does that sound? That is looking good. First look was through the uh, camera screen there for me. That is looking good. I think this is going to be the good bar for it. This is going to be the right choice. Um, we get everything fitted up and stuff. I may see if I can polish up this bar a little bit. I've got some mother's mag and aluminum polish, but I'm pretty sure it'll work for steel and stuff. I don't have a buffing wheel or whatnot, though. That's something else I need to get. You know, for a brain, I put that on the correct direction. Oh, you just went on there. Get off. I think that might oil actually. I think it's gonna oil through it just fine because I can see through there where the oiler is. This hole up here goes into the bar from the other side and oils. So I think we're gonna be fine. I think this is gonna work half assed okay. You know, half butt. We'll just mount this up, see if that actually is gonna line up with the adjuster. Sorry if my, in advance if my head gets in the way. Uh, what I do with my screwdriver, my good one. I just had it, there it is, big one. Oh my goodness, it is, it fits a Mac. What? It fits a Mac, perfectly. Adjuster, everything goes in. Yeah, it fits a McCullough. Oil, it's gonna oil, it's gonna everything, because the adjuster's on the bottom and the oiler's on the top. So it's it's perfect. Works out great. You guys are seeing stuff good? Dude, that is looking fan freaking tastic. Glad you all are here for this. I'm just not some guy rambling into a camera for too long. Alright, so I'll have to put that on. But first, we've got to get our chain. Let's get this square ground. Please work. This isn't too nice of a setup here to start over. Thirty-two inch. I bought it off of eBay, so it was measured for thirty-two. I didn't care. Figured if I had to shorten it, I have to shorten it for some reason. Being a sprocket knows it will be picky about certain aspects. Oh yeah, it is going to work. So one thing I've got to do when I go to do my adjustment, I got to have the nose lifted up. That's another little thing I learned a long time ago, a while back from a, another chainsaw buddy. There's a couple little spots is binding still. It's almost like it's the chain itself and not the bar like random spots to bind up. Not the prettiest looking bar, but it's a bar. I'll we'll just tap that in there, pretend we didn't see that. This doesn't look like this bar was used much. Probably hear my daughter outside swinging on her swing. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful right there, y'all. That is beautiful. Hope y'all get the chance to be able to help me run this saw.
might have to bend that ever so slightly. About we'll to see, but I now it'll clear. It'll all clear up once everything gets lined up straight as should. Shims and everything will clear everything and whatnot. I gotta find some bar nuts. That's what I've got to do. And I painted the inside of this because you can see the ugly on some pictures that I had taken. Where is the adjuster for? I've actually got to go this way. The so one thing I never have is enough of these bar nuts. There we go. So that's in there. I gotta find them. I gotta find some bar nuts and the washers, or I said a washer something, and put in there. Get that down, and this thing will be ready to start and get the chain pre-stretched out, all that good stuff. It's gonna be back and forth, back and forth. You make a cut, that thing's gonna slop down and everything. Once it gets its initial stretch, it'll be fine, but it's in the middle, perfect where it needs to be and everything. So if I gotta take a link out in the future, so be it. But that, that chain was worth the worth the money to me. I bought it last year. Yeah, right after I bought these. And then I'm like, oh, you can still find four or 458. And uh, right when I bought these, Bailey stopped stocking the stuff. And 58 just seems like a size that was gonna become obsolete one day. Everybody's running either 63 or 50. So naturally 58 was just gonna be going away for going away for a trip forever, so. Figured I've run vintage, a vintage bar with that, and honestly, I was really trying to stray away from the roller nose. The roller nose is great. I've got plenty of them with them, so we'll go ahead and we'll jump into this nice little thing right here and uh, whatnot. But yammering, I gotta find some bar nuts and washers. See how difficult I can make this process for myself, shall we? No. I got that back one slightly too tight. Who knows? Bar nose is supported up by its own weight. It's tightening up down here as I screw the screw in, but not enough where everything's going to come apart. Make sure that's happy up there. Don't slide down to anything stupid. See, so got a little ways to go. I'm being stupid. See, I can't, like I said, it's got some tight spots in it, but it's not like it's actually, probably have to start it and run it, to be honest, for a couple of them tight spots. But for now, we're gonna, See, that's what it is, and then it wants to go up into the groove. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there. We'll t do a final tightening right there for this. I'll have to start it up tomorrow. I really don't want to start it here in the garage. Confined space, but also keep the smoke down. Since I really don't open the garage door now that I'm air conditioning it. I mean, I do every now and then. If i got to clean or blow everything out, then that's fine. Don't over tighten these. Be good right there for the moment. They'll vibrate off. Just watch, you give them a chance, they'll vibrate off on me. I mean, not putting that on all the way. It's a 9 16 wrench. There we go. Forgot to put the spike on. But I didn't get it painted yet. But I'm probably going to have to take this off again, anyways. Yep, it's on the sprocket. Is it oil or do oil things? Yep, comes right through. I'll show you all. Take uh, you all out so it is oiling properly. I did not have to modify this bar. So. Any light on the subject over here? Probably not. We're looking right in there. That's where we're looking. 
you know, because focusing is a difficult thing for this camera to understand. Nope, that's not where we're looking. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that. Tilt the lock on to there. Do not move. So, yeah, tons of oil. Unlock. Lock focus really nice. It's one of those rare situations I got to use it. So now we just have to start this up and let it do its thing. That is a huge bar. It takes up the whole workbench. Holy crap. It actually hangs off of it a little bit on the back, but I got to say, this has turned out absolutely fantastic. And boy, does she oil. Just let it sit there and dribble for tonight. I'll probably spray with a little WD-40 on the whole thing. Just a little bit all the way up and down it. Wipe it down real good. But yeah, I'm glad I I'm glad I went with the sprocket nose on this one. I really am. So probably have to turn up the idle just a little bit now that there's gonna be some drag on this. Have to bump it up ever so slightly. But this this saw has turned out absolutely fantastic. I definitely say if you want to build one of these, start collecting the pieces now. You may get lucky and find parts for them. You know, somebody's selling them for cheap and everything. Um, it's just one of those. You kind of got to have the money ready, but don't get desperate, all right? Just it, give it time. You will find parts, I promise. So, so I will hopefully see you all tomorrow at some point. It's going to be another humid, hot one out there. So I'll get the uh, chainsaw pants down and everything and whatnot that are above me. Uh, we'll get this thing going, warmed up, and make a couple cuts with it and clean it up. And hopefully we'll see it at the show here shortly if all goes correctly. So, all right, hopefully tomorrow we'll be getting cuts put in on this on my little homemade engineered log because that's pretty much all I got. But like I say, who knows, this all could just turn into one badass nonstop runner. What did I do with that fucking spike? I've got to find it. Maybe I'll just slap some black paint on it, slap it on there and call it a day. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Actually, you know what we could do? I'll go ahead and slap that on first. Where I got it all wiped up and cleaned up real good. Just kind of goes anywhere. Stick it right on the side here, just slap it on. No. It's really difficult to do right here. I kind of wanted you guys to be here for this. It wraps way under. Sorry if my head's in the way. straight sort of we're going for 98 percent accuracy on this right push it down up here just kind of ease it on down just kind of push it down wrap it around take one down pass it around 99 bottles of beer on the wall that is beautiful Hey, I got it straight. Look at that. That's the second time I've had to put that sticker on something. Wow, that, that makes a huge difference. Just in the looks right there. What do you all think? Let's get you all a little closer. Look at that, look at that. This is here so that I, uh, in case it wants to do something weirder, I can also get this out easier, but I gotta get a cover for that, but look at that. That's beautiful. Amazing, amazing reproduction sticker right there. We'll get the go-kart one on a little bit. But for now, that is perfect.
I kind of figured with how the head touches the shroud that uh, the sticker was not going to get happy. So we're probably going to have to nip it off just a little bit. But overall, I think it'll be fine after that. Man, she is a runner. And good lord, look at the oil. And here I thought it wasn't going to get enough. Oh, wait, the adjuster is like all the way out. Perfect. All the oil. Tomorrow, we get the cut. I gotta go get this cleaned up real quick. I hope you enjoyed those few cuts I could get in. Um, the, the engineer log was falling apart, like I said. It is white oak. You know, if it were pine, this thing would just blow right through. That's a, that's a decently soft wood versus out there. That's that's hard wood. So, um, like I say, if I had more wood, I'd have more ability to tune it and everything and stuff like that. But overall, it's pretty happy. I'm happy with the result. It's an absolute torque monster. I was not going to be able to stop that chain. And that is what these big monster builds were about. It wasn't about speed. It was about they had more torque with them. And uh, yeah, it, but you, your speed came from your chain not stopping. So you have, you know, like I say, you got more torque and everything to be involved in that and whatnot. So it is just absolutely, this was a blast to be able to build. Um, when I start this last year, like eight, nine months ago, maybe, maybe even sooner than that and everything. So it's one of those builds. It's just going to take time. And there's people out there asking about how to build these piecing one together and stuff like that. It's going to take you some time. Don't be in a rush. You know, that one up there, that took a little bit of time to piece together and everything, get stuff for. This was no different right here. So it is nice to finally be able to handle own handle have built you know one of these very well known probably one of the most popular saws that guys want 
is a Super Pro 125 with a 101 engine, especially the B. And like I've gone over, the B has a few things, but performance-wise, it's the same as what is up there. So, um, yeah, you get that opportunity to be able to build one and stuff like that, go for it. Just take your time, as I've said and everything. So, I've got to let this cool down and clean it up, air it off, and... I've got some stuff to do for the show coming up in a few weeks, and hopefully I'll see some of you there. Um, like I said, I'll just, if I remember to put the details in the comments and everything for it and everything. Uh, I've got to get the gas drained out of it and everything and whatnot and stuff like that. But it performs spectacularly, absolutely spectacular. It is a complete, utter mess. Like, you know, your typical saw. So what was once shiny... Yeah, once shiny clean, now it's... Everything's got mess in it. Go turn the light on. Everything that was shiny and clean is now a disgusting mess. So we'll let her cool off. But if you like what you see here, go ahead, leave a comment. Please like the video, that helps out a ton. And I really hope to see you guys on the next build. Any questions, comments, and stuff like that, let me know. And I will try to get to those and whatnot. What the next project is, um, I'm not 100% sure. I've got a couple more lined up. So until then, I just say thanks for watching, everybody.